من تبعت له لا 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 هنرى كيف هنت اللي شو اسمه
As promised, we are starting now. Um, apologies for the bit of delay this morning, which is not usual, but there were issues with some people accessing the link to the webinar. So we waited a little bit more until we resent it um, uh, for everyone that registered to join. Good morning. Thank you for joining us again this morning. Today we are holding another webinar which will focus on um, a, con a continuation on the previous webinars. This webinar today will not be focused on COVID, um, but on other schemes that will help support during, uh, during the COVID period. Um, uh, in fact, today the focus will be on liquidity incentive schemes. That's what we have called the webinar. It is supported and we appreciate the support um, of acquiring.com and uh, it also, we also have the participation of Malt Enterprise and the Measures and Support Division, two entities that support us a lot in our work and support businesses individually. Thank you very much for being with us as well. Um, I wanted to, um, just before we start, to pass a couple of comments on how to stay in touch during during um, uh, this current period as you might have noticed we have really updated our um, means of contact because um, due to covid um, we realized that businesses need um, to be in touch with us um, on a continuous basis and we cannot wait um, a lengthy time frame to pass on some information and therefore please stay in touch with us by following our facebook page where we put up a number of notices. You can also um, chat with us through Facebook Messenger. The same goes for Instagram, um, where you will find us on SME Chamber, as SME Chamber. On Facebook, you will find us as Malta Chamber of SMEs. And then we have all, also launched a WhatsApp um, news system. So we will be sending also by WhatsApp um, very important news related to businesses um, uh, both in relation to COVID and other matters that we believe requires particular attention. To subscribe to WhatsApp, you not just need to send an SMS via WhatsApp on the number 9999, so that is four nines, 5199, with the word subscribe. So if you send us this by WhatsApp, you will start receiving um, WhatsApp alert alerts that are related to, to business. So today um, uh, I am going to just go through quickly the agenda for, for this morning. First, I will be starting with an overview of the Maternity Trust Fund. Following that, um, uh, we will have um, Malta Enterprise going through the Micro Invest Scheme and also the Skills Development Scheme following which the Measures and Support Division will take over um, and they will be discussing and explaining the Business Advisory Services and the e-commerce grant scheme. And then we will also have um, uh, a discussion and explanation on a scheme um, for fast remote payment facilities and that will be done by acquiring and finally, I will close off for those of you who have not um, uh, joined us for the previous webinars about the COVID schemes. I will just run through very quickly to what is available specifically um, as part of the COVID schemes. And uh, something else I wanted to mention before we start is that um, we will be taking um, your questions and any comments you have via the chat. Something important that you need to do is that where you, when you are writing the chat, there is two and you have to select all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see the questions and we do not have a repeat of questions or comments that, that you will be posting. So please use this chat. After each intervention, I myself will be looking at the chat and posing the questions that you would like to make to the speakers. And we will take it like that step by step, going through a presentation, taking a set of questions. If we get a lot of questions and we do not manage to answer them all, don't worry. 
we will um, get back to you with the answers following the, the presentations for following this webinar. Okay, so I am going to start with the first with the first scheme that we have um, uh, on our list this morning, which is the maternity trust fund. Now, this is a bit of um, bad news for businesses employing only male employees um, because it is a scheme that can be made use of if um, any of your female employees went out on maternity leave. So um, basically this came up because in July of 2015, um, the government came out with an initiative and said in order to limit um, what it felt was discrimination towards women, um, uh, because maybe employers might have preferred employing men because of the maternity, um, the maternity repercussions on the businesses, because you have an employee that goes out on maternity leave. Um, the government decided to put an increase on the NI of 0.3%, which everyone has been paying on each of the employees, being male or female, since July 2015. Now, this created a fund. All this money started going into a fund, which is called the Maternity Trust Fund. And the aim of this fund is to um, lower the burden, so to say, on employers for um, uh, employees which are female that have gone on maternity leave by refunding the cost to the employer. So, yes, it is true that when females go out on maternity leave, um, they are still not present at the workplace, which creates a bit of a complication, especially um, for the smaller businesses. But at least there would be help because um, you can claim the cost of that you would be paying the worker while the worker is out on maternity leave. I encourage you to apply um, for the scheme if you are eligible, if you have any, any people that went out on maternity since July 2015. So don't look just at this year, don't look just as last year. You are so far still eligible to claim back funds that you might have paid out to your employees with that were out on maternity leave since July 2015. We are highlighting the scheme now because um, uh, we know that there are a lot, a lot of funds in this trust fund which have been untapped. And we believe that part of the problem, um, part of it, let's say part of it, part of the problem was that everyone was very, very busy. Um, we did not have time for paperwork. And this fell by the side. Now that everyone um, uh, has suffered a, a lower um, level of um, sales and the business, um, and some employees and business owners might have more time on their hands to look into these kind of things. Um, uh, we can match it with also the need for liquidity because this will automatically inject a couple of thousands um, in, in the business. When looking at the average um, wage in Malta, we have computed it that each claim on average plus or minus would give you an injection of 4,000 euros. Again, plus or minus, some might be more, some might be less. So yes, it is worth looking into. The amount of paperwork is not very big. Um, you can get in touch with us to help you with this as well. It's part of the service that we give as an organization. And within weeks, you will get this um, cash injection, which, which I believe is, is very important in the current situation. Um, so, First of all, um, uh, you will need to have an EID to be able to access the, the application of the scheme. But where you don't have any ID, we have a facility to submit it on your behalf as well. So if you don't have any ID, don't worry. Um, we, will, we will get all the paperwork and submit it through our own system. What can be claimed? What are the eligible costs? Um, this is also very positive because um, the basic wage is claimed in full. 
you will get also prorata of the statutory bonuses and allowances and the portion of a night that was paid by the employer. All these covering a full 14 weeks of pay during which the employee was out on maternity leave and something that I forgot to mention also on adoption leave. So if you have had anyone since July 2015 that went out on maternity leave or went out on adoption leave, you are eligible to claim back your funds under, under the scheme. Um, something else that I wanted to mention is that, um, for instance, we had a case ourselves that one of our employees was on maternity leave um, just before the scheme was launched. So she went out on maternity leave um, on June, in June 2015, and the scheme came out in July 20, 2015, just a month after. We were also able to claim um, the costs of maternity from July onwards, so even those costs can be claimed. Um, so, um, uh, yes, the documentation, I am just going to go through the documentation very quickly just to give you an idea um, of what documentation will be required for, for the scheme. But again, um, who is interested, please get in touch with us and we will send you um, the full list of documentation and how we can help you apply and everything. You will need the FS5s of the employees during the pregnancy period, so before they went out on maternity leave. You will need the pay slips covering the 14 weeks because this is by refund. So after you um, make the payments to the employee and the maternity period is concluded, you are eligible to apply to get the refund back. You will need the Jobs Plus list. We can help you get this as well, even though today you can get this online. The FS3 of the employee, if it is related to adoption, the adoption certificate, obviously your bank details, so that the government can pass on the funds. And then some minor things, such as um, the date of birth of the child and when the employee went out on maternity leave. So that is basically it about um, the maternity trust fund scheme. Again, it only takes a couple of weeks for it to be processed. So as soon as we have everything submitted for you or you do this on your own, um, in a couple of weeks, you will receive um, a full refund of 14 weeks covering the costs of maternity, maternity leave. Okay. So I see that I have been pretty clear because I am not seeing any questions related to the maternity trust fund. And I think we can proceed to our next speaker. Um, our next speaker is uh, Mr. Kendrack from uh, Malta Enterprise. He is the coordinator of business development at Malta Enterprise. Um, Kane will be going through first the microinvest scheme and following that the skills development scheme. Good morning, Kane, and thank you very much for joining us. I know you are extremely busy at the moment, and thank you for making time. I leave it in your good hands. Good morning, everyone. Yes, currently we're mostly taking up nearly everyone at Malt Enterprise with carrying out reviews of the weight supplement scheme. Uh, we've received an access of 17,000 applications covering around 70,000 employees. So you can imagine um, our time is mostly used up at this point in time in carrying out those, those particular reviews. Before starting to explain the microinvest scheme, I'm noting um, a very interesting comment by Stephen regarding the lifetime of the microinvest certificate, whether this will go beyond the three years, given that most businesses will definitely not be absorbing and making use of the tax credit, given that uh, next year they won't have that much or if any taxable income. Point taken, um, we will discuss this. Um, it's a very good suggestion, very good suggestion. We do so currently for startup um, businesses as the lifetime of the certificate is, is five years, not three years. So this is something that can be considered. However, 
And what I also suggest is that all comments relating to the, mo to the microinvest scheme and skills development scheme, if it's okay with the moderator, um, um, kindly filter them and send them to me by email privately. And we will go um, through them one by one uh, later on today, or maybe, maybe latest by end, by, by end of this week, which is, which is tomorrow. Um, if that's okay with you, Abigail. Now, regarding the microinvest scheme, uh, most probably a good number of, of the participants know about the microinvest scheme. It's one of the uh, flagship schemes at Malt Enterprise. Um, mostly in the past few years, we have increased the amount of, of um, the maximum support that, that we can provide under this measure. It is a tax credit scheme. It's not a cash grant, okay? However, I mean, um, uh, we like to explain it in a way that it's not providing cash up front, but it's providing or allowing businesses to retain money in the pocket, uh, basically. Um, not paying taxes, but using a credit which has been provided through the microinvest scheme. Um, uh, it is a scheme which is applicable to uh, those companies who uh, or all kind of businesses, both self-employed, uh, business, uh, limited liability companies and registered partnerships, basically all businesses who, who are subject to corporate um, or, or personal taxation, uh, but those businesses who employ up to 50 uh, full-time employees. Um, uh, we have changed the scheme. Uh, before it was up to uh, 10 employees, then we have increased the full amount, the, the maximum amount up to 50 full time employees. Uh, it is a tax credit calculated uh, as either 45% on a number of, of eligible cost items, or if you are uh, operating from Gozo, it's at 65% of the eligible expenses. And there are a lot of uh, eligible expenses. When it comes to wages, it's not just new wages, but also wage increases of more than 3% on the previous years. Um, equipment, refurbishment of a business premises, uh, motor vehicles, commercial vehicles, these are all expenses which are eligible under the micro-invest scheme. The maximum support in, an, in any normal circumstance is of 50,000 euro um, over a period of three years. Maximum 50,000 euro spread over a period of three years. However, for those businesses who are either operating from Gozo, family business, registered family business, or uh, businesses who are women-led enterprises, they get a maximum support of 70,000 euro rather than 50,000 euro. So for all the other categories, it's 50,000 euro. For uh, Gozo based enterprises, women led enterprises and registered family businesses, is at, it's at 70,000 euro. Um, I saw another comment, I have to comment on it, although I promised you that I probably I won't be able to comment on all, this, uh, on all the comments, but I think I can handle this. Um, we take into consideration just full-time employees, not FTEs. So hypothetically, if a business employs 50 full-time employees and 1,000 um, part-time employees, they would still be considered as eligible under the, uh, the micro-invest scheme. So we just take into consideration full-time employees uh, all right i i think i think uh, uh, you let me know um, i think i do have time I, I can handle i can handle some some of the comments if you want kane if you want to go through the presentation and then i will make a list of all the questions and ask them to you so because it's difficult to focus on the presentation and then go back yes to the yes, yes yes can we do sense. that Makes a lot of sense. I will okay, continue with the, with, with the presentation. Uh, so that is the information related to the microinvest scheme. Now, regarding to the uh, tax credit lifetime, usually it's it, the, the company or the business who who is a lit, who becomes a beneficiary under the microinvest scheme can use the certificate um, uh, for a period of three years. Um, so uh, the individual can absorb as much as possible the full amount approved as a tax credit for startup companies. So those enterprises, um, I, I use the term company interchangeably with, with other, other businesses. So I have to apologize. 
um, startup enterprises have um, have up to five years to use the the full amount, the tax credit certificate. This is a, a de minimis measure, the microinvest scheme, which is a very important point to consider. Um, and I think uh, Moira from the Measures and Support Division will also make a reference to this de minimis regulation. So uh, the microinvest, any support on the microinvest has to be deducted from uh, the maximum de minimis assistance allowed over a rolling period of three years. As, you, as most of us know, um, there is a limit of 200,000 average uh, on a rolling period of three years. Um, uh, so any uh, de minimis measure is taken into consideration and is accumulated mm -hmm. with other de minimis schemes um, that were approved for that particular undertaking. That is all when it comes to the micro-invest scheme. Um, a lot of businesses use the micro-invest scheme. It's been going on um, for a, a number of years now. Um, we're nearly um, 10 years into the scheme. So it's been quite used. And quite frankly, it's one of the best schemes that we, that, that we have. It's, it's straightforward, pretty simple, um, uh, and it works. And it works. I mean, getting a tax credit of a maximum of 50,000 euro rather than you know, spending them on taxation, but using them to reinvest in your business, I think it's, I think it's, a, it's quite a good measure. Okay, so shall we take um, a couple of questions related to microinvest game? Yes. Um, how do you deal with companies forming part of a group, especially in relation to the headcount? Now, in relation to the headcount, um, what we are taking into consideration when it comes to the microinvest scheme, we look at at linked companies. Now, what I mean by linked companies. So if I receive an application from uh, company A, for example, um, uh, we see that if there is 50% um, shareholding by that business in another undertaking, those two entities are, are considered as one in terms of the micro invest scheme. So it's just 50%. Plus, if it's less than 50%, um, uh, we still review it under the micro-invest scheme. However, what it does impact... <laughs> However, what it, what it impacts is the, uh, is the maximum support allowed under the de minimis uh, regulation. So if, for example, uh, just to give one hypothetical scenario, so if an undertaking has um, been approved a maximum of 180,000 de minimis support prior to submitting an, a microinvest application, if that company is not related to any other undertaking or it's less than 50% related, so it's up to 50% related, we can provide it under the microinvest scheme a maximum of 20,000 for that certificate because the balance under the minimis would be 20. Um, however, if it is, if it is um, related to other entities, um, we still provide it with the support, but it's accumulated with the amount of maximum de minimis allowed. I don't know whether that has uh, touched on, 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 on the query, if you require further clarification, please, uh, I can handle them later on if, if that's okay, if that's okay with you. Is, okay. One, is one shareholder considered as a family business? Uh, no, we take into consideration the applicant entity. So if the applicant entity is a registered family business, that is considered for the maximum of 70,000 euro. But if um, one of the shareholders has another family business, um, for the sake of that entity, it is not considered as a family business. Okay, another question relates to um, the vehicles. Um, do they have to be new, um, second-hand? First time registration in Malta, in terms of vehicles. First time registered in Malta. 
So it can be second hand as well. It can. It, they can be second they are, hand. Okay. They can be second hand. Okay. Now there is a question related to um, that the application, the the guidance, I think, um, gives an indication that the tax credit can be changed into a cash grant, and they are asking, given the current situation. Um, uh, where businesses um, require a lot of liquidity. Um, uh, how is Mott Enterprise considering um, uh, requests to change tax credits into cash grants? I can fully understand the situation at this point in time. However, given that the scheme, the guidelines and the way it was communicated and approved by the European Commission is solely as a tax credit, we can't change assistance approved under the microinvest scheme as a cash grant so that is not allowed if however um, we have businesses who quite naturally have um, have been impacted by by covid-19 there are a number of measures that we can look at that you that we can look into which are both emergency support measures and multi enterprise has a number of these um, I can mention three. There's the wage supplement scheme, the quarantine leave measure, and the teleworking scheme, plus other measures that were mentioned by the Mold Development Bank, and also um, the tax deferral measures by the tax authorities, but also other measures which are cash grant based. But no, um, changing approved assistance under the, under the, specifically under the micro invest scheme. Uh, we can't change that to a, to a cash grant. Okay, next question is reference to the 50,000 on a three-year basis. Does one consider the year in which the cost was actually incurred or when the aid has been awarded? For instance, if I applied for 2018 and was awarded full 50,000, can I make a late application for costs incurred in 2020? where the aid will be received in 2021 to restart the next 50,000. So uh, the, the applicable date of the support would be the certificate date, not the date of when the costs were incurred. Okay, another question. Is it the company that needs to be 50% shareholder or the shareholder itself? The entity itself. So if the entity has a shareholding in another company of 50% plus, the entity is considered as, as the single undertaking, not the individual shareholder. Okay. Um, someone else is asking, I am self-employed and have less than one year of activity with my business. I am the only employee. My first PNL will be submitted next June. My question is, a startup that still does not have profit should wait to apply to this microinvest scheme? Very good question. It depends on how much expenses were incurred the year prior. Because, and I, I think I failed to mention this, uh, which is, the, I think it's, it's the most important aspect of the microinvest scheme. Eligible cost items are cost items incurred the year prior. So every year you submit an application for expenses incurred the year prior. Currently you submit um, an application for costs incurred in 2019. So if your first year in operation um, um, carry out the majority of, of the uh, capital expenses or, or the other operating expenses which are eligible under the scheme, I suggest that you do submit the application. Remember, especially for startup entities, um, you have five years um, uh, uh, to, to use the scheme. However, there is also the possibility um, to submit a late application later on in the year. Because the way it works is that if you submit the application by the first deadline um, for self-employed, now it's 30th April for this particular year, it was extended. Um, for companies, I expect that we are going to extend it as well. Um, but if you submit the, the application by the first deadline, the certificate um, uh, would be issued in time to use it for uh, taxable income um, of 2019. So year of assessment, um, uh, 2020, base year 2019. 
if you submit it later on by the second deadline, the certificate will be issued um, for taxable income 2020. So you can, so to speak, play around by submitting a late application, but by the second deadline, not next year, in order to have the certificate ready to be used for income, for taxable income in 2020. However, due to the current impact of COVID-19, most probably, um, most of the businesses won't have a lot of taxable income for 2020. So it might make sense, financially speaking, um, to submit it by the first deadline. Okay, um, so last question that I am seeing on Microinvest. Some of these might you might need to go a bit deeper exactly the links between a company and another, but I'm going to ask you if company A owns 80% of company B and each company employs 40 full timers, then neither company A nor com company B can apply under Microinvest. Am I right? So if company A owns 80% in company B, I, I, I'm reading it again, if, if it's okay. And each company employs 40 full-timers, then neither company A nor company B can apply under the microinvest scheme. <clears throat> Am I right? No, they can still apply. However, it would be accumulated under the full de minimis measure, under the full de minimis assistance that, that is that is applicable. What I do suggest um, is in terms of the um, shareholding um, questions, I can also review them and send a proper reply to, uh, to Abigail, which, uh, and, and Abigail can share, them, can share that reply with, with all the participants. Yes, okay, we will do that. Because so I, can I can prepare also a sort of a table and how it works with all the details um, in, in, in this table. Okay, very good. Thank you for that, Kane. Um, shall we move to the next scheme, which is the Skills Development Scheme? Mm. The Skills Development Scheme, uh, unfortunately, um, wasn't used that much. And I say, unfortunately, because at a point in time um, when uh, we can definitely use this scheme um, uh, in spite of everything that is going on at this point in time shows us how important this skills development scheme is. And I, and I, and I will explain why in, in one simple sentence. Um, this scheme or another version of it um, was used when there was the financial crisis in, in 2008, when a number of companies used to put their employees on a four-day week, and the fifth day was used to carry out training for their employees. At that point in time, most companies were given assistance in terms of a training gate scheme, something like that it was called. Um, so this scheme shows us that if um, uh, your activity has been impacted and there is not, not, not much going on in terms of operations at this point in time, you can invest in upskilling your employees and at, this, and at the same time getting government assistance on, under this measure. At this point in time, the skills development scheme, although in principle it can either be considered as a tax credit or in, in some aspects it can provide as, as a cash grant, for this current period, it, it, uh, assistance will be given always as a cash grant if you are upskilling your stuff. So that is food for thought. You can, instead of laying off people, so to speak, although I'm 100% I'm, I'm positive that no employer wants to lay off their employees, you can provide a training program, even remotely. Obviously, we are accepting that as well at this point in time. Um, uh, and you get support under the skills development scheme. So apart from explaining how it works, I suggest that please do come forward and uh, as SME uh, chamber, uh, provide me with, with, with the contact details of interested parties. Uh, so we can take this discussion even, even offline. Now, how, it, how does it work? The skills development scheme, in principle, it's a measure that can be used by employers to upskill 
their employees. Anything that has to do with, with upskilling your workforce is mostly eligible under the skills development scheme. All sectors are eligible. Um, there is no one sector apart from very few and I can mention them, um, but even in most of the cases, there are other ways how we can support, but in general, all sectors are eligible, even retail, if that is a question that, that, that I have to answer later on, even the retail sector is eligible under the skills development scheme. Um, In-house training is eligible. If you are getting, um, if you are getting a, a private service provider to carry out the upskilling, the, the training program, that is also eligible. Um, the intensity rates of the support are 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 very very positive. Seventy percent of training cost for small enterprises would be reimbursed. Fifty sixty percent for medium sized enterprises and 50% large. So 70 small, 60 medium, 50% large. And a lot, of ex a, a, a lot of, ex of the expenses are indeed reimbursable costs. So we have consultancy costs um, going into developing the training program, wage costs for those employees during the contact hours, during the, the training hours, wage cost of the trainer if the training is being carried out in-house, um, hourly cost of the training service providers. Now, these two are not applicable at this point in time, but air travel expenses, if you're sending your employees abroad, or air travel of expenses to bring over trainers and also rental of training rooms and equipment. So in a nutshell, what we're saying is that most of the expenses going into um, delivering a training program is eligible under the skills development scheme. Now. Just to give an example of how it can be used interchangeably um, or simultaneously with another measure, which is an emergency support measure under the COVID schemes. At this point in time, Alt Enterprise um, has, a, has the teleworking scheme, what we're, what we're calling, is that if an employer has a teleworking agreement with, with his employees and carries out some expenses, um, you know, laptops or servers or whatnot to carry out work remotely. If that same equipment um, is going to be used um, to provide upskilling um, or training to, to, to the employees, the employer would, can apply for the teleworking scheme when it comes to the equipment or the software and also to the skills development scheme in order to uh, sustain um, uh, the operating cost when it comes to wages. So that is a way how we can use um, both the skills development scheme and also the, uh, tele the teleworking scheme in order also to assist in terms of the capital expenses that need to be incurred at this point in time. Um, that is the skills development scheme. So the strong points of the measure, um, in my opinion, are the intensity rates, um, very good intensity rates. So 70% for small, 60% for medium, 50% for large. All sectors or 95% uh, of um, economic sectors are eligible. And uh, usually all costs related to the training program um, uh, are, are, also, are also eligible. Thank you very much for that, Kane. In fact, yes, I am hearing um, a lot of people are telling me that they are using this time to train their employees, and I am pretty sure um, that they are probably not making use of, of um, the skills development scheme, and we will do our effort as well to put the mess push the message across, because I agree with you, um, it is, there is no better time, I think, to do something like this. And the aid intensity is quite significant. And from what you are saying, um, you are quite flexible as well on the training programs, which makes it very accessible and attractive for businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could it be used for the training of a self-employed? Um, uh, let me just 
check something. And in the meantime, I just want to make a note, a note because we are receiving also, but I realized about this um, uh, a bit late. Um, questions to the question and answer. I know it's called question and answer, but we are using the chat because we cannot monitor um, more than one um, uh, more than one um, question window at the same time. So please use the chat. Um, uh, any questions that were unanswered related to the Maternity Trust Fund and others, we will be sending you a reply um, via email. Don't worry about it. Sorry, Kay. Uh, Self-employed persons are also eligible. Quite naturally, the self-employed person has to employ um, others in order to be eligible for this particular measure. And if they want to get training for themselves, Kay? They wouldn't be eligible under this particular measure because it's intended for, for employees. However, as, as, as we all know, there are always ways and means with multi-enterprise in order to get assistance maybe under another measure, which we can, <laughs> which we can discuss at another, at another time. Yes, okay, thank you for that. Can the skills development scheme be used to cover the expenses which were necessary to train staff to work from home? Um, as I as I briefly explained before, um, if the employer is going to incur um, capital expenses at this point in time, they can use the, the teleworking scheme in terms of equipment. Mm -hmm. Then the time used to train staff, you can apply for the for the skills development scheme, but not on the capital expenses. Yes. Um, some businesses have invested in new platforms that um, require maybe staff training to know how to use to the full these, these kind of platforms. So yes, very pertinent, I guess. Um, can you please remind us um, briefly um, the difference between the, of the EU definition, small, medium and large enterprises? Um, up to 50 employees, it's um, small enterprises. Up to 250 employees, it's medium-sized enterprises. Um, 251 plus, um, it's large enterprises. Thank you for that. Would the skills development scheme comprise any other assistance, compromise any other assistance under COVID scheme? Very good question indeed. At this point in time, since there is the wage supplement scheme, which technically speaking, um, it, 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 it will definitely um, result um, uh, uh, in, in a possibility where you get the skills development scheme for the contact hours for training. And at the same time, those people um, may, be, may have been included under the wage supplement scheme that would constitute um, double funding, strictly speaking. However, however, the way that we are working is that um, the employ and the employer would apply first and foremost for the wage supplement scheme, uh, and we will carry out the review and uh, carry out the approvals, issue the approvals under the wage supplement scheme. However, if there are additional contact hours which are used for the skills development, we can also accumulate that amount with the with the full support uh, being given. These are not the minimum measures. So there is no capping of 200,000. That's a very important point as well to mention. Okay, um, uh, as for the training, um, can it be used for any kind of training or does it have to be MQF rated? No, no, it, it, it has nothing to do with MQF rating. It's upskilling your, your stuff in order to, uh, to improve either the product or service that the, uh, that the, the, that the entity is, is, is into. Yes, it includes in-house training. If, if you can prove that um, you will increase the improve um, an output, both for yes. the staff and for, or, or, and for the business itself. Yes. Um, staff training scheme over and above the weight supplement. Yes, that is what you said. Yes, Kay? Yes. Can the scheme be used together with the weight supplement, especially if a company had to shift to a four-day week? It, it's, it, I think, I think it's, it's, it, I would give the same reply as I, as I did before. Okay. So we have managed to cover the questions related to the skills um, scheme. Um, thank you very much, Kay. We might come back to you with some other questions 
um, that will be directed at us following this. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for, for this morning. And always, um, we thank Want Enterprise for all the support that you are giving us and businesses, especially um, during these difficult times. Thank you very much. Keep, keep, keep safe, everyone. Bye bye. Okay, so now I am going to move um, to Ms. Moira Attard. Um, Moira is the Director General of the Measures and Support Division. Um, uh, basically, Moira takes care of EU funds um, when it comes to businesses and they're, um, use, they're making use of EU funds. We will start with the Business Advisory Service. Moira, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I leave it, I leave it in your good hands. Good morning, Abigail, and to all your participants, and thank you for inviting us um, to participate in this web webinar. Um, uh, as you are aware, we've been working on a number of schemes since the past four years now, together with uh, the Chamber, um, particularly on, two, on these two measures that we'll be um, addressing today. The Consultancy Services Grant Scheme um, uh, through the scheme, we are offering a grant of 4,000 euros in the form of a lump sum for small and medium enterprises to acquire consultancy services to develop business plans, business process reviews, operational reviews, which at this time might be um, of interest to some of your members. Um, particularly um, uh, at a particular time as we're facing now, this could be offer an opportunity um, to businesses to look into their processes and their, the way they are organizing their work. So um, through consultancy services, um, uh, which are approved under this scheme, one can develop, um, acquire consultancy services to develop such studies to assist um, businesses to review uh, their operations. So the aid is, uh, uh, it, this is quite a simple scheme to apply under. So we, we have reviewed our processes lately and issued uh, a second call. And under the second call, um, uh, we have simplified the way uh, the application process and even the reimbursement process. So now we are um, issuing payments against the del deliverable. So once um, an, uh, an enterprise applies and the grant is approved, work will start with the, con the, with the particular consultancy service provider. And once the deliverable is uh, finalized against that deliverable, we will issue a grant of 4,000 euros. So irrespective of the actual cost incurred, um, one is guaranteed a grant of 4,000 euros. Um, uh, the e-commerce grant scheme, on the other hand, um, uh, we have launched the scheme way back in 2015. We had identified the need for businesses in Malta to uh, um, uh, speed up their investment in e-commerce since um, we had lagged um, behind other member states. And today we are seeing how e-commerce had placed um, businesses who had invested in e-commerce at an advantage because the situation that we are facing today due to the COVID impact um, uh, put enterprises that would have, uh, that had invested in e-commerce um, at an advantage against others because they could uh, reach out to their clients in uh, a manner which um, uh, is uh, more safe, considered safer than what we were used to uh, through the traditional means. Um, under the scheme, uh, an enterprise, again, we, we support SMEs, um, may receive support up to 5,000 euros to develop an e-commerce site which enables their clients to um, shop online and uh, do, uh, carry out the financial transactions also online. Again, this is a very simple scheme to, um, to access. Um, as Kane mentioned earlier, both schemes um, are uh, regulated through the de minimis scheme. So one would need to 
consider uh, all the assistance that one would be tapping into. Um, and keep in mind the 200,000 threshold over a three-year uh, rolling period. In order to facilitate, um, we have reviewed our cutoff dates. Usually we had a monthly cutoff date under both schemes. Now we have a fortnightly cutoff date and the process is um, uh, quite, quite a short process for one to get an approval. So within one or two weeks, you can get um, your reply whether your application has been um, accepted or not. Um, as to the documentation that is required with the applications, one would require um, a copy of the um, compliance certificates from the VAT department, the, tax de um, the income tax department and the FSS uh, compliance certificate. And also, um, uh, unless you're, you had already um, uh, deposited your financial statements with the business registrar, who would need uh, a copy of your financial statements. So basically, the application is online. It is available on our website. You can access it through our website. And any, anyone who would um, require further information or one-to-one -one assistance, um, we will uh, gladly assist um, at any point in time. Thank you very much for that, Moira. Um, um, so as a follow-up to, to these schemes, if anyone would like more information, um, way to access the schemes and um, specific questions, um, do direct them our way and we will um, direct them to Moira and her team and they, I am very sure that they will cooperate and help you out as they always do. And also I wanted to mention that the measures and support division um, are very good in dealing with businesses and also have come out with these cutoff dates because they have um, realized that these two particular schemes that Moira has mentioned are very important at the moment um, due to COVID and what is happening. Um, and yes, we have cutoff dates that we can work towards now. Um, something else that businesses are, as Moira herself said, um, asking us for help in this direction. Many businesses are thinking about how the economy will be post-COVID and during COVID, um, how they are going to change their operation, um, how they are going to improve their service, change the products and services they give to be still relevant for consumers during COVID and even after COVID, because as many are saying, um, the economy will be very different after we get out of COVID. And it's important um, to get um, support um, from experts to help you um, through this change. With regards to um, the internet and e-commerce, it is something that we have been working for many, many years. And the day came even earlier than we thought, all of a sudden, um, who had um, an e-commerce website um, was able to continue working and change a bit. Um, the, the work is done, um, but through the scheme, they can both improve, change their websites to make them more effective and also invest in a fresh e-commerce site um, to be able to adapt to the current situations. Correct, Moira? Yes. Um, uh, so the scheme is aimed at those um, SMEs that do not have the capability, current capability, to offer their services online and the financial transaction. So you might have um, instances where an enterprise would have invested in a marketing website, but um, they would, we could support them to invest further to um, change that website and upgrade their website into a proper e-commerce website. Um, I am seeing some questions um, on the chat. So what is the going website? To the top of the questions. If a company has already qualified for this consultancy in previous submissions, can we still apply now with reviewing our processes in COVID-19 situations? Yes, definitely. As long as it is addressing um, a new situation, one can still apply. So that is the, the purpose of the scheme is to enable us to support enterprises in every step of their, in each phase of their development. 
So one can apply more than once under the scheme. Okay, so um, a question related to startups and their eligibility to apply for e-commerce and the SME consultancy scheme and how the documentation would change in relation to startups since financial statements would obviously not be available. Yes, so for startups, um, one would require um, uh, the projections. Okay, so fees, um, the, project, the proje uh, projections and also um, uh, the evidence that one would have applied um, for, uh, with the VET department for, to, for the issuance of a VET number. So there, yes, there are some, some differences there. Um, in the case of self-employed persons, which I hadn't mentioned, one would require um, the, a copy of the last two income tax returns, which were uh, filed by that self-employed person. As to the website, the website is businessenhance.gov.mt. There one can, can access all the relevant information um, for uh, under all the schemes and access also the guidance notes. But through our help desk, we are also offering one-to-one -one remote meetings where we can guide um, enterprises step-by-step -step, um, uh, through, our, through the application process. Okay, someone is asking um, about the timing, whether to apply before, whether um, is it by reimbursement, um, uh, how long does it take? Yes, so the, it, is, it is very important that since we are supporting enterprises um, through the European Regional Development Fund, so there are additional regulations mm -hmm. Um, to what multi enterprise has, um, which we need to also observe. And yes, one would need to apply prior to the actual initiation um, of uh, works or services. Um, the assistance is in the form of a reimbursement. So one would need to have um, carried out uh, the consultancy, uh, incurred expenditure, and then uh, a reimbursement is issued. The process is quite efficient. Um, so uh, currently we are experiencing um, a timeline under the both schemes of not more than two weeks to issue a result. And once um, all the documentation is submitted um, uh, through a claim for reimbursement, within three, three weeks, one should, should have um, been reimbursed um, uh, for, for the expenditure. Okay. Um, and uh, someone is asking, um, just, just as a side note, um, we had this experience in the past where people tell us, listen, I cannot stay applying before, I really need it now. And in that case, there are other schemes that are available, which is the micro invest, which Kane um, uh, mentioned earlier from multi enterprise. So you need to see exactly, compare the aid intensities and what works for you best. Someone asked whether they can finance the development of an application. Yes, um, one can be assisted to also develop an app. Um, uh, but our experience is that generally um, SMEs are opting for responsive websites. So one would develop a, a website, an e-commerce website, which would also um, uh, offer um, uh, the same uh, user uh, uh, friendliness through different devices. So, but an app can also be supported. Someone is asking, what about e-commerce sites such as Shopify? Will this be part of the scheme? Um, uh, well, it, depends, sir, it, would, it would affect the amount of grant that one would, uh, would uh, benefit from. Um, because most um, Shopify, using Shopify, it's a license um, that, that you get and then the, the work that is required to upload um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, the catalogs and would, 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 be, would incur very minimal expenditure, I believe, to apply for, for under the scheme. So one would, should think about 
and look at what is best for their uh, particular situation and assess under which schemes um, to apply. So if you want a quick fix and opt for Shopify, maybe the e-commerce grant scheme would not be the best uh, option. Okay, thank you. Another question is, if I am currently benefiting from a micro-invest scheme at full de minimis level, can I also apply for an e-commerce grant now? Yes, as long as you are within the uh, threshold, uh, the eligibility threshold of the 100,000 over a three-year period. Okay, something that might be worth mentioning, um, but this we don't have confirmed as yet, is that there are discussions with the European Commission in view of COVID to maybe extend the de minimis, um, at least during the current time. But so far, this is not confirmed as yet. There are just discussions. Um, uh, is this a first come, first served, or the funds are the funds um, unlimited? No, funds are never unlimited, unfortunately. Um, it is a first come, first serve basis, but we do have funds available, and I believe we have funds available, and we can assist uh, quite a large number of uh, applicants. So under the scheme, there we had budgeted uh, 5 million euros, and there are still um, funds available under the scheme. Very good. Thank you very much, Moira. Um, uh, and thank you to the Measures and Support Division. Thank you. Um, uh, you are always there to help us, and I am sure that you can go to them with questions related specifically to your businesses, and they can help you around with your applications and uh, to, to fit you in the best way possible. Thank you very much, Moira. Thank you, and stay safe. So now I am going to um, include in our discussion um, our Vice President Marcel Mitzi, um, who, as you probably know, um, he is our person related to championing IT um, solutions for businesses and especially um, our face with regards to e-commerce. Am I right, Marcel? Yes, yes. In fact, for me, uh, good morning, everyone. because I've been preaching for everyone to go online. And now all the businesses that have an e-commerce presence already are basically the top selling businesses on the islands. That's what, that what has happened. The panic buying that we started with has now shifted to online buying. In fact, I'm seeing as well that a lot of business owners who didn't use e-commerce themselves to shop for their families are now using it and have realized that uh, how strange it is that you go online and you find only one company selling the product you want, which has uh, goods on its website with prices to help you make the decision uh, online at that time. Uh, I'm also extremely happy to see that Moira saying that it has been speeded up. It's something we have been trying for a long time to speed it up because before they were taking uh, quite a while, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, I've seen, I do this work myself as well, and I've seen clients who are now at the moment very happy because obviously they were selling, they, I mean, online you always sell a little here and there, but the difference between then and now is absolutely astounding. Um, uh, as well, uh, there's also a side effect at the moment that goods from China, through eBay especially, are taking much longer than usual. In fact, uh, the, the dates they give you nowadays are delivery in September. So obviously the sh there's a shift to buying from either locally or at least from Europe. And the COVID-19 has pushed even more to local buying because even if you need to buy an essential item at the moment, you have to actually use online. Uh, if you go to certain stores here in Malta, you cannot actually buy things which are not essential except online. So whether you like it or not, you have to start using an online system. This is something which is doing a lot of good because people who were never uh, acquainted with online buying are now, now actually doing it. Um, we're even seeing, for example, chat systems like Facebook Messenger and chat systems within websites, which are all of a sudden are starting to work a lot as well, because obviously people, rather than phoning, it's much easier um, to use uh, a chat system. One piece of advice for people who who uh, are thinking of starting uh, a site, a new site, the, the biggest work to start a new site is has to be done by the site owner and not by the web developer, okay? It's very easy to say I'll start a site now 
uh, at the moment, we're, most of us are at home, and you have, you have uh, time to start collecting the images of your products, selecting the products that you're going to put online, et cetera, et cetera. Ideally, your website will eventually be linked to your stock control system and everything happens automatically. But maybe if you want to get it done in a hurry, at first you don't do that and then maybe do it later on. So there's a lot. I mean, I, I face this in my work. Everybody you know, wants to like do it next week. And then you ask them for the material and the material takes months because obviously the, your developer is not going to know your business. You're the expert about your business. So you have to have everything prepared. So if you intend to do this, start working on it now. Start collecting data so that when you start the development, you make it easier on everyone and, you know, everything gets gets done much faster. Um, John from uh, Acquiring is going to explain to you a, a method of a payment system, which is something obviously you have to consider because you're going to get paid online. Um, and some people, in fact, opt to not get paid online. They do deliveries and the payment is done. But obviously, at this time, COVID-19, uh, the less contact, the better. So ideally, you get paid online, and obviously, you have to keep an eye on the charges uh, so that your prices remain competitive. And that is that is what John is going to be talking to us about. Thanks for now. Thank you, Marcel. Um, and now, yes, I invite John, um, Mr. John Patch who is the Chief Officer Business Development at Acquiring.com. Um, basically, they have a very interesting um, solution related to electronic payments. I must admit that it is one of the main queries that businesses are coming to us with. Um, this COVID has um, generated a lot of adjustments for businesses, and we wanted to highlight this solution very much. Thank you for your participation and for supporting us, John. Uh, very welcome. Thank you for, first of all, for organizing this event, which is uh, obviously a hot topic uh, given the current uh, situation. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, all the participants uh, who are online. Uh, the fact that they are here today obviously means that they care for their business and also they are concerned, uh, uh, particularly in these difficult times. Um, normally we meet face to face, we greet each other, shake hands, exchange ideas and after the presentations enjoy lunch together over a glass of wine. Uh, let's all hope we can go back to doing these things very soon. Uh, in the meantime I would like to share a presentation I prepared. So hopefully you're getting this on your screens as well. So the reality today is that we have a substantial number of shops uh, which are closed or giving a limited service. Social distancing is the new norm. Certain outlets have taken measures as not allowing more than one person inside the shop at any point in time. For some, face-to-face -face selling for the time being is not even an option. For most, our business routines have been totally disrupted. It was very interesting to listen to the speakers this morning um, talking about the incentives and grants that are available to assist businesses go through these challenging times. Some of these were about consultancy, others concerning human resources, whilst others were incentives directly aimed at helping businesses go online. This is called the e-commerce and is the main subject of my presentation today. While the incentives are aimed at helping businesses build and launch websites, those, these on their own will not lead to much business unless one can accept payments for goods and services. This is the funda fundamental difference between a website and an e-shop, the difference between just displaying goods and services to selling them. Accepting remote payments opens your shop 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Ensuring that customer experience is always of a high standard. They are always greeted with a smile, offered discounts, informed of new products and other news the business wants that clients don't know about. Your business becomes immediately global and available to millions of potential customers. But whilst having a website is a nice thing to have, it doesn't mean that not having one prohibits you from making business. There are solutions in place that allow you to take payments remotely, whether you have a website or not. 
One of them is a direct integration of your website into our payment gateway. This will enable you to take orders around the clock. But even if you do not have a website, you can still accept payments remotely over the phone or by email, or even as Marcel mentioned, through chat systems like Facebook, WhatsApp, SMS, we can support all that. A virtual terminal is another solution for taking payments remotely, as well as the now very popular pay by link, which uh, basically allows you to send the payment link from any device so that you can accept payments and keep your business running. POS terminals can also be used to take payments remotely, since we allow transactions to be keyed in on our terminals. Let's take a quick look at the solutions you can adopt in these difficult times to keep your business going whilst your shop is closed. First of all, let's uh, have a quick look at integrated websites. We offer different ways for you to integrate your website to our payment gateway. This could either be through uh, an application programming interface, which we call API for short, hosted payment page, or by using one of the four to four shopping carts we support. This will obviously require an amount of development to achieve, but will eventually result in fully automated payments being handled around the clock. However, if you do not have a website or currently in the process of building one, you can still accept payments for orders taken by phone, email, or even, as we said, social media. Our virtual terminal was developed for this purpose to support payments for those businesses that do not operate through a website or who are still in the process of building one. A response to an authorization request is immediate and you can therefore confirm the order to the client instantaneously. No website is necessary. However, for this to work, you would need to receive the data from the cardholder to be able to capture the authorization on the virtual terminal. A third and more secure option that we are offering for those who do not have a website but would still like to carry on doing business is what we call pay by link. As the name implies, uh, the, the payment is made through a link that you would send as part of an email or an SMS message, which may contain a quotation or information on your products. Once the recipient presses on the link, he will be redirected to our payment gateway, where he can key in his card number, expiry date, and CVV without having the need to disclose these to anyone else. Authorization is also immediate, and once approved, both you and the client will receive an email confirming that payment has been executed. As you can see, there are different ways of how we can support you to continue doing business in these challenging times. Finally, our POS terminals can also be used to key in a transaction. Fitted with a SIM card, you can also take payments when delivering goods or performing services to your customers. As you have seen, we have a number of solutions available for you to keep your business open even whilst your shop is closed. These solutions are not there only in times of crisis. We have heard Marcel saying that those that uh, have already a website, already have a website, are the front runners in these times. So don't wait for another crisis to happen, please. They are there to give you a fast, secure, and reliable means of accepting payments at all times, whether through your website, your shop, through social media, or any other manner in which you would like to reach your customers. As we have seen, we can help you keep your business running at all times. Do speak to us, whatever your business is, whatever your concerns are, we are here to help. I thank you for listening to this short presentation and look forward to having the opportunity to meet you all soon in person. And yes, why not? toast to normality with a glass of wine. Until that day comes, please stay safe. Thank you very much for that, John. Um, uh, I think that everyone participating in this webinar appreciate um, the level of relevance of such services at the moment. 
and we are also collaborating with acquiring because um, of the great service that and solutions they offer to businesses and I must underline at very competitive costs. Um, as you know, um, we, we know that this, this is something um, very sensitive for businesses, the level of costs of services come at and acquiring uh, appreciate this and um, have adapted their services and costs um, uh, to be accessible for businesses at large. Um, uh, some people are asking, um, first off, I would like to make a question myself, John. Um, some businesses would want to um, understand the level of security of such systems. You said by SMS um, and by email. I, I, I know that Mota is also moving maybe later than other countries towards this direction, but this is so always a bit of, of a point of concern. Uh, with regards uh, to security, um, all the transactions are being captured on our payment gateway, which is PCI compliant. Uh, PCI is standing for payment card industry. When we say PCI compliant, it means rigorous uh, audit uh, by external uh, uh, companies, uh, which ensure that our systems are secure. So whether uh, it's a virtual terminal, whether it's a pay by link, or even through the, the website, whatever uh, channel you are using uh, to accept payments, they're all going directly to our payment gateway. Um, so there again, whilst the customer is browsing the products, he is on the client's website. Once he decides to purchase, uh, that transaction is uh, seamlessly being carried out on our payment gateway. So in that respect, uh, the merchants were uh, accepting payments need not worry about uh, ex excessive expenses or any expenses at all with regards to securing their system. Obviously, uh, it's always good to, to invest in uh, securing your system, but uh, insofar as payments are concerned, there's no worry because those are taken uh, on our payment gateway. Thank you for that, John. Um, um, someone is asking about the charges. What kind of charges um, are they looking at? Mm. Obviously, uh, charges are something that, that uh, everyone is concerned about. It's, it's always the question that we get and always one of the first questions that we get. Um, charges is difficult to, to um, give a number here for a number of reasons because it depends on the underlying business, it depends on volumes, it depends on a number of factors. However, what I can say is that, first of all, uh, we are very competitive. In fact, we, we have onboarded quite a number of merchants, not only recently, but uh, over the past uh, eight years since we have been in Malta. Uh, and for this particular period, uh, there again, together with, with the schemes we've heard before, we are waiving uh, any setup fees um, or monthly fees. Uh, basically, we charge a small percentage per transaction. So even once uh, you integrate, if no transactions are passing, uh, the merchant is not incurring any charges at all. A small percentage is only paid when a transaction is, is authorized. Um, uh, some, someone has asked, can this be available when issuing online invoices without having a website through which to pay? Uh, yes, it can. In fact, uh, it was uh, one of the reasons that, that we developed this product uh, purposely for those that do not have a website. So there again, you can communicate uh, by email or by phone with your customer or uh, like we said before, through social media. Uh, once there is an agreement to purchase the product, the merchant can simply send uh, the quotation via email together with the link which he will obtain from our system. And like I said before, uh, when the client receives the link, he clicks on that and uh, the web browser directs him to our payment gateway. So yes, definitely it can be used uh, for email or other channel, uh, not necessarily a website. Okay, um, someone again is asking about the percentage. I think that given um, that this is commercially sensitive data and as you explained, um, it's, it varies according to a number of variables, um, but um, I can assure everyone that the charges are very competitive, um, uh, and that is the reason behind our, our um, work with acquiring. And so I do encourage you to go directly to acquiring um, and check it out. Um, obviously, no strings attached, right, John? 
and they can see if it makes sense for their business model or not. And someone else is asking if there is a minimum amount of transactions necessary. No, there is no minimum, uh, neither of transactions in terms of transaction count nor of, vo nor of volumes. And like you said, uh, anyone uh, contacting us uh, for a quotation or whatever, there's no commitment. Uh, we, we don't charge for, for that either. So, um, so uh, it, it's absolutely up to the president's uh, concern to, to, uh, to discuss the requirements with us. Um, the discussion should not be simply focused on the percentage because uh, if we just look at the percentage then we might be uh, going for the wrong uh, product so ideally we discuss with the merchant with each merchant his uh, business model uh, the, the market he, he wants to reach whether it's domestic whether it's Euro european or global and then yes uh, finally we discuss uh, of course Thank you very much, John. Um, uh, any, t any more questions, we will pass on to you and give a reply um, to our audience. Um, like we did with all other um, speakers, um, please let us know if we can be of any assistance or, and if you require any information and we'll be happy to um, pass on um, this information through any of the speakers available. Thank you very much for this morning again, John, and um, for being with us. Um, now, quickly, I am going to go through, as promised before, I am going to share the screen from my end. Okay. Okay, so I am going to go through very quickly because I don't want to repeat um, the initiatives under COVID. Um, uh, we have done, gone through these in quite a bit of detail um, during the previous webinars. That is why I am not going to, to go through um, this level of detail, but whoever has any kind of question related to any one of the incentives um, for COVID, um, please um, do um, pass them on to us and we will be happy to reply. Um, also, um, we have um, a list of frequently asked questions um, in relation to the COVID schemes that we will be passing on to you immediately after um, this webinar. Probably they will match a few of your own questions. So the COVID weight supplement is one of the main schemes that will help businesses um, cover the wage costs of their employees and um, the aim is obviously not to, um, uh, re to reduce as many employees as possible from being redundant. Obviously times are very difficult at the moment and it is important that businesses are sustained to be able to control the level of costs they have without, without um, uh, risking them closing their doors in a permanent manner. So um, first off, um, the important thing I want to highlight about the scheme is that you are all encouraged to apply if you have suffered some degree of loss because of COVID. I know there is an Annex A and an Annex B, but um, this is an original list that um, uh, was drafted by the government. It's still used um, uh, to guide those evaluating on what one is eligible for, but um, businesses can still apply and make their case. If you go further down, you will find the application form. Um, businesses can still apply to make their case and explain why they should be eligible for the COVID weight supplement and explaining why is it, it is necessary um, for them to be able to retain all their employees and also um, uh, and also um, to survive during these most difficult months. Um, uh, you can direct any questions to us. As you will see, if you input the VAT number, the NACE code will come up automatically. If you have any questions related to the NACE code and if your business description does not match that of the NACE codes, um, please send us questions. We will tell you how to go about it, even if when in putting things um, you are highlighted as ineligible again please um, say that you agree or not with being ineligible 
um, explain your business activity um, under business activity um, say if you have um, suffered a complete suspension or a partial suspension um, severe suspensions even if do, though they are not complete are still considered as um, being complete suspensions and here in the area I am marking ABC is where you will make your case and give a description um, of why your business has sustained a severe loss because multi enterprise will be going through um, uh, evaluating applications on a case by case basis. Something else that is very important to mention is that if you are self employed, you need to include yourselves um, as one of the employees. If you are directors who are employed, you also need to include yourselves as part of the employees. The system will not do it on its own. So that is the weight supplement. Again, if you have any queries related to this, please send us out, send them our way. Another initiative is the deferral of um, payment on tax. Again, anyone can apply for this. Um, so far, the deferral covers March and April. But um, most probably there will be an extension um, of this period as well. The taxes and I, um, VAT and everything will still be due after this period, but they, are, they will be giving you a breather for the, for the current, current time. Another initiative is a very important one, um, which was launched through the Malta Development Bank. It was mentioned by Malta Enterprise by Kane earlier on. Um, there is the link to the Malta Development Bank um, website where you will be getting more information about this. But basically, in a nutshell, what it is, is that um, you will have access to um, a loan specifically for working capital and um, running costs, which means that under this loan, um, you can apply to cover wage costs, um, water and electricity, rent, um, any invoice that, invoices that you were not able to pay because of what happened with COVID um, uh, and any other running costs, even stock. Um, uh, so through this loan, um, uh, you will be able to cover these kind of costs. Now, um, you can apply around about um, two million, two million, for 2 million euros. Um, of, of loan. The interest rate will be very um, attractive. So products like these from normal banks usually come at a 5.5% um, interest rate or 6% interest rate or 5% interest rate within that bracket. And I can tell you that it will be much, much, much lower. It is not yet set because this, has this scheme has just been announced and it will be working through the individual banks. I can tell you that BOV's participation will be confirmed very, very soon and other banks will follow, will follow this. So um, start thinking in this direction. Something that is also important is that uh, many, many businesses, many members have told us that they are suffering from late payments. Um, uh, businesses they have a business relationship with from whom they were expecting to receive some form of payment have been delayed indefinitely. This is a scheme that you can encourage your business um, uh, contacts to make use of to be able to pay you. You should do this yourself as well to be able to pay um, other businesses and that is how we get the domestic economy um, going and get the very necessary liquidity again um, in our businesses. Something else that I should mention is that this is heavily guaranteed um, by the Malta Development Bank. So you will be asked to put either a partial, very, very small, a 10 covering 10% of the loan um, uh, guarantee. And some banks are even saying that this um, partial guarantee will also not be necessary. Again, it is available by the banks, not directly from the Malta Development Bank. So um, 
you will need to see and even if you have accounts with other banks um, if you if you, have, if you work with one specific bank but you have accounts with other banks shop around about the scheme because the conditions might vary a little here and there and it might be more attractive for you to go uh, with a specific bank rather than another if you have any problems um, with your bank regarding this scheme, please do come forward with them because we are in direct contact with the Malta Development Bank and also the Central Bank of Malta um, to tackle on the ground problems um, that businesses are experiencing. Another initiative, um, this relates to social measures. This is more directed to your employees. So if your your employees are parents that um, cannot work from home, if they have any kind of disability, um, if they have been um, made redundant because of the impact of COVID, if they have been ordered to stay inside because they are vulnerable, um, they can all benefit from um, uh, government funds by applying directly. They need to apply directly through the following link socialsecurity.gov.mt that is the website of the social security and all the schemes are available there so obviously i know that these are difficult times both, both for businesses and the, their employees and it would be very helpful if you direct your employees um, towards this channel okay so another initiative under covid which is the quarantine leave. If your employees have been asked to stay on quarantine, the government is um, giving employers and they need to apply directly um, 350 euro grant um, for each employee on quarantine leave. So if you had an employee who went on quarantine leave, both um, uh, starting in March or later, um, because of travel abroad, because of um, contact with people that, that were infected, um, you can apply um, directly as, as an employer. Facilitating telework, um, we have mentioned the scheme as well today more than once. So any businesses that um, have invested in any teleworking equipment, specifically in relation to COVID, so the, this must be equipment, software, and other facilities and costs that were incurred after the 15th of February, um, you can apply for this incentive. And something else that we have made available during this week, and uh, we have also sent guidelines to members to draw up teleworking agreements. This is important because um, businesses will be given 4,000 4, um, per company to cover these costs that um, I have mentioned, um, VPNs, PCs, um, laptops, um, and, and other connectivity requirements, but also 500 euros per teleworking agreement. So if you do not have teleworking agreements in place, you will be missing out on this. We have sent you guidelines to help you draw up teleworking agreements, which is important not just for the sake of the scheme, but also to have something formal in place um, uh, so that you have all the paperwork ready um, not to get into complicated issues um, later on um, uh, in time. Employment of third country nationals, the only thing I, I wanted to mention is that businesses, um, the government is, is currently um, limiting a lot the access to, third, to the access of businesses to third country nationals. Um, we have just left an economy where human resources were very limited and the need to employ third country nationals was very necessary. But now we are going into um, uh, a situation where people are losing their jobs and there is an oversupply of human resources. And therefore, um, uh, in order to adapt to this situation, the government um, is making a stop on um, uh, employing third country nationals. No new applications will be accepted and businesses that uh, make third country nationals redundant will not be allowed to um, re-employ third country nationals um, for the foreseeable future until things settle down at least. So I am going to see a bit if, if I have any questions before concluding. And, uh, OK. 
Okay. And there are quite a bit of questions. If I had applied for weight supplement, as had total suspension of business, but now I can sell a few items. Do am I still eligible? Yes, you are still eligible for the 800 euros. 800 euros does not mean that you have to close totally your business. It does not mean that your employees get to do nothing, get to stay at home. You are actually encouraged to try and keep on operations and keep your employees active. Um, the 800 euros are there only to sustain you during this period and um, any change is necessary so that your business gets on, on its feet, um, you should keep on doing them because the 800 euros will not be there forever. If a company with complete closure has outsourced office staff and not registered on its payroll, can the company apply for a weight supplement of these outsourced employees? Um, companies can apply um, for the weight supplement of employees that are on their own payroll. Um, these employees would be on the payroll of someone, and therefore that specific per that specific business um, would be able or should be able to apply. Um, something else worth mentioning is that um, the eligibility of the weight supplement is on the primary um, source of income of the employee. So if they are with you as part-timers and with someone else as part-timers, um, the company employing them on a full-time basis um, would need to apply. On the further liquidity measures, these are being guaranteed by the Malta Development Bank. And does the bank have the right to ask for a personal guarantee as, as well over and above? The part covered by the Monta Development Bank is covered by the Monta Development Bank and the bank has no right to ask for any additional guarantee. There is that 10% which is not covered and depending on the bank, some banks are saying that they will not need any additional cover because the risk is, is minor um, uh, and uh, others are saying that they will require a partial guarantee to cover that 10%, but no, you cannot be asked to cover um, more than that. Um, something else that is worth mentioning regarding the liquidity scheme uh, through the Malta Development Bank is that um, the banks are also expected to provide this kind of help um, with immediate efficiency and not ask you for a whole list of paperwork and the requirements um, uh, that can be settled afterwards even though these requirements and paperwork requirements um, need to be um, very realistic and not overly bureaucratic hopefully we will get some form we are still discussing some form of a standard of what can be required um, uh, as well but as i said the scheme is in its very first um, days of application um, discussions are still ongoing with a number of banks um, but if your bank is proving very difficult please let us know please try other banks and we will be supplying you with a bit more information as we go along as the dust continues to settle as i said we are in discussions with the Malta development bank and we have an open channel of communication and to make them aware of how things are going on the ground and they are working on resolving them A telework working agreement does not um, compromise the weight supplement. They are two, two separate things. Um, they are given to the employer to help with um, two separate initiatives. One to keep people in employment covering the wage and the other to, um, uh, to encourage working remotely and help the employer um, sustain um, the, the costs related to, to teleworking. We submitted our application for COVID weight supplement um, Annex A on 1st April and up to now we have only the acknowledgement in hand and no confirmation of acceptance. How long is it taking Malta Enterprise to process applications? So um, as you will know, Kane is no longer with us and one of the reasons he is no longer with us is that because they are very busy at the moment um, assessing applications. I can tell you that um, since the 15th of April, um, the first um, businesses have started receiving replies in relation to the wage, wage sub, sub, supplement 
So I would say that it is a matter of days. Um, uh, obviously, the earlier um, your applications were submitted, um, the earlier you will be getting a reply, but they are processing them at a very fast pace as, as, as far as I am aware from the number of um, responses we receive from members telling us that they have received a reply and therefore um, a reply should be made may be given to you in the coming days um, uh, if however um, you would like to query this um, directly um, uh, there is an email address of covid for Monta enterprise let me see if i can um, make this available to us here it is it's covid at malta enterprise.com um, do quote the reference number received in your acknowledgement that you receive from malta enterprise and tell them and ask about um, uh, what is the status of your application and if you have any pressing worries that you want to make them aware of do let them know as well so this is the whole um, run through. I am going to pass again um, uh, the word to Marcel for some concluding remarks um, uh, from, from our side, who is our vice president. Thank you very, very much for being, um, uh, for being with us um, uh, this morning again and, and now even afternoon. I hope you have found um, uh, this session interesting as i said if you have any questions um uh, you want to make um uh, please do pass them on we will go through the whole set of questions and if we have missed a couple um or because they require um uh, a more elaborate um answer and maybe it might be um specific for businesses um we will we will get back to you with with that as well Okay, let me see if Marcel is on. Hi. Oh, Marcel. Hi again. Uh, trying to start my video. No. Hi again. Um, final words. Now, first of all, we're uh, planning uh, one of the things you need to be uh, a bit adapting if you make an online presence is uh, knowing how to edit images. That's one of the issues that us developers fa face um, with our clients because most people don't know how to use applications such as Photoshop. In the coming days, we want to announce an online course. This is, uh, it, won't, it will be a simple course just to get you acquainted with how to edit images, reduce their size, crop them, that sort of thing. This is something we would have liked to have done before at, at the, the chamber. The problem is that we don't have enough computers for everyone. But at this, at this time, since everyone is at home, everyone has his own computer and uh, we can do it all together. This will be most probably a couple of sessions. We'll announce it soon. And as well as a final word, um, at the moment we're conducting a survey. Some of you might have responded to it. And it was, we'll be publishing it next week as well. And it was a bit surprising because one of the questions we asked was uh, if it's, uh, the, the pandemic and its effect on business has affected uh, people mentally uh, in, in a way, in any way. And we gave them a rating of one to five. Actually, there were two questions, how it has affected the business owner and how it has affected the employees. And to both answers, it was surprising to see that a large number, over 50% of our respondents, are saying that it has affected them mentally. Um, my role at, 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 the, at the chamber um, is also, I'm on, an arch optimist. I'm always the optimist and the last one to, to be negative. Uh, I'll just say one thing. First of all, there are over 400 clinical trials of drugs happening in the world. Never in the world have all the scientists in the world worked together as they are now. And all the rubbish you hear about China is mostly lies. The Chinese doctors are the ones who are contributing most to the database of the WHO, the World Health Organization, who is collecting all the data and everyone's working together with a single aim. All the research on other drugs has stopped and everyone is focusing on this problem. Um, it's a pity that drugs that were um, designed for SARS, which might have worked, were stopped because SARS died out. Hopefully the same thing happens here. And I'll say another thing as well, it's during wartime that a lot of the inventions that we're used to today happened. For example, I'm sure you'll be surprised to know that canned food was invented during the war because they needed a system 
to supply food to soldiers, for example. Radar was invented in a few, a couple of years by the British because of the war. So let's keep our hopes up. A cure might be found, and this could be over before we know it. And my advice is don't destroy everything thinking because we're never going to get out of it. Hold your horses. That's why the government is giving us help, because we need to um, get over this and hopefully with the least with the least damage possible. Now is a good time to take a good look at yourselves and reorganize your businesses, uh, you know, and get things done differently, maybe, so that later on we'll be in a, a better position to start catching up. Thank you very much. Bye and thank you. Have a good day.